Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, and we are just moving right along through this whole series on prophecy. Today, we're starting to look at what the New Testament says about prophecy. Yesterday, we um, saw that the spiritual gifts are listed in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. So today, we're getting more information about this prophecy and what it is and how it functions. So let's pray. Lord, as we uh, continue to learn more about you, draw us closer to you. Let it all be for your glory. Open us up to be used by you to build your kingdom so that we can continue to glorify you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in first P or I'm sorry, second Peter chapter one, starting in verse 19, and it says, We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a shining light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Now, there's a lot there to break down. First of all, we have the prophetic message that's in Scripture. We also have modern day prophets that are giving us prophecy. Now, with the modern day prophets, we have to be mindful of the fact that it is not Bible. They could be mistaken. They could also be doing a false teaching, and there is a difference between the two. There's mistaken teaching where they thought they were telling the truth and they were wrong, and then there's false teaching where they're intentionally trying to pull people away from God. We've got to be mindful of that. If it's in the Bible, we know it's 100% true. We know we can count on that, and we're told that it's reliable and that we should pay attention to it. Because it's that light that's illuminating the things that we don't know. It's that light in that dark place. And then in verse 20, it says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Prophecy does not happen because of the prophet's power. Prophecy does not happen because the prophet was orchestrating something or the prophet was leading something. Prophecy happens because it comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. It is simply a message being given to a person. That person is told when, where, why, and how, and to whom to deliver that message. That's all it is. You're, it's like you're carrying a letter, plain and simple. That's the role of the prophet. For prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. They are simply giving the message that's given to them by the Holy Spirit. Now in Amos 3, it says, I feel like I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. Maybe I'm not. Um, in for Amos 3, verse 7, it says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The prophets are being shown things, and we can't discredit the fact that there are modern-day prophets that are being shown things. However, we also have to be very watchful that it lines up with Scripture and that it points straight to the truth that's um, already in Scripture. And then in Joel 2, starting in verse 28, that is also quoted in Acts 2. This is where it says what to expect about the, of that, those end times. And we are definitely in those end times. It's in verse 2, starting in verse 28, it says, And afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. That is definitely going on today. I know I've experienced some of it. I can name several people that I know personally that have experienced some of it. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Why is it called great and dreadful? If you're a believer, it's a great day for you. If you're not a believer, it is a dreadful day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. When we call on the name of the Lord, we are equipped with spiritual gifts. And those spiritual gifts enable us to be in God's tool belt. 
God is not in our tool belt. We are in God's tool belt, and he uses his servants to build his kingdom and to glorify his name. So be a tool in his tool belt. As you go into your prayer closet today, pray over how you are being used in God's kingdom and be that willing servant that's open to anything. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.